The Met Gala was almost a month ago, and it marked Zendaya's return to the event after a five-year hiatus. And like everybody else, I was so excited to see what she was going to do and what she was going to wear because she somehow always manages to turn one of the most stunning and interesting looks. And we all had missed her and we were so excited to see her come back. And I obviously wanted to love, 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 love what she wore. While I thought the look itself was really interesting and executed incredibly well, I didn't necessarily feel like it was the best for her. And in this video, I want to discuss why. Hi, I'm Non from My Authentic Style. And this channel is dedicated to helping you find your authentic style. So quickly, the theme for the Met Gala this year was the Garden of Time. And the exhibition is titled Sleeping Beauties Reawakening Fashion. So for the Sleeping Beauties, we were expecting the guests to reference old collections, designers, silhouettes, techniques, really anything from the past that hasn't been in use for a long time and bring it to life. They could also be a little more on the nose and maybe reference Sleeping Beauty, the character, or any element of the short story that was in reference. There was really anywhere that they could go with that. For the Garden of Time, I think most of us expected to see a lot of florals. And with that, there was really one of two ways that could go. The first is this light and airy and innocent and very angelic sort of feel, which pulls on the ingenue and ethereal essences. And we did see this reference quite a bit. This look by Isaac Gonzalez, I do hope I'm saying her name correctly, but she has that sort of ethereal essence to her. She really very much could play some sort of elf in something and I would believe it, right? And that is very important for your ability to carry these kinds of looks because this is very otherworldly. There's something ethereal about it and she definitely carries it off, but it's also ethereal in a very soft and gentle and feminine way. I just, I, I love it for her in particular, for her specifically. I think that she is doing a great job of carrying that lightweight fabric, that very delicate coloring. And then she has something to anchor it a bit with that neckline and the way her hair is done. It's all just very, very pretty. It's very beautiful to look at. And I think she really referenced this sort of thing really well. Now, of course, the other way that this could have gone is the darker, more dramatic in essence, I would say. And this references the woods or the vampire, a very gothic sort of figure. And one of the people who did this exceptionally well was Kendall Jenner. I think she looks absolutely stunning in this. The hair, the dress, the colorway, the makeup, everything. It fits her like a glove. I love the detailing. Everything is just right, and it does a really good job of referencing this sort of thing. So Zendaya obviously chose to go this darker route in terms of referencing, and you can see this in the choice of colorway. There's a depth and a darkness to the dress as well as her makeup, obviously. And in this video, I really want to focus on why I feel this didn't quite come together in the way that I would have hoped. And it's really important to note here that there is a distinction, and I will make it continuously, between the vision that I think they had for the look and how they executed that, which I think was done really well, and how that vision works on her or rather didn't work on her specifically because of a clash of colors and lines and a mismatch of essences um and that's a completely different thing so keep that in mind as we go along but to begin let's just talk about the dress it's very obvious that 
uh, Zendaya was referencing this dress to the right, which is a Galliano for Christian Dior gown at the Dior Spring Summer 1999 Hot Couture Show. And you can draw a straight line through the inspiration then to what was created for her to wear it today. It's the same silhouette. It's the same kind of detailing. It's a different colorway, but you can definitely see that all the major elements are there. They're present. And Zendaya's gown is a custom Maison Margiela by John Galliano piece. And it's very interesting too, because John Galliano had this viral fashion show at the beginning of this year where with Pat McGrath also had this incredible makeup moment, which we'll talk about too. So Zendaya had the iconic makeup that was utilized by the models during that 1999 hot couture show. So again, she's really referencing that older era. And this is where that reawakening fashion element of the theme comes in. And I think it's such a brilliant way to do it. And in her hair, she, to complete the look, she had a towering feather headpiece tucked into a hand-painted forest green beret by Stephen Jones. A beautiful piece and so creative, so many elements. I really, really love the look that they pulled together for her. It's clever and I think it was done well. And I really do think that just sitting on a mannequin, I would love to see this look. It is absolutely stunning. However, my issue comes when it is not on a mannequin and it is on Zendaya because I feel as though her particular makeup doesn't mesh well with the makeup of this dress. So there are a couple of elements that I feel need to come together to create a perfect look. And those are lines. So this means, is the person aware of their body type and are they dressing to correctly harmonize with the lines in their body? The second part is essences. So again, if somebody has the correct lines, but they don't dress for their essence, that look will still look flat. And this is quite important for this look because one of the ways that essences is visibly expressed in a look is through the makeup. And this look has a very bold makeup, which I feel clashes with Zendaya's essences, which is a big part of that mismatch. But essences is the second part. And the third part is color. So even in the perfect look with that honors your essences, the wrong color can quickly drain someone of life and just make them look off. So all of these things have to be present and have to be done correctly for that look to be perfect, for it to create a moment or something iconic. And we're going to talk about how each of these came together or didn't come together in this look. So to be able to break down this look, we have to quickly discuss Zendaya's essences. And she has a couple at play, one of which is the dramatic essence and is why she is able to pull off looks like this one, for example. This is very much that vampy that uh, that reference to that Kendall Jenner dress, this is off that same vein. It's got that darkness, it's got that vampire-esque, it's, it's very heavy, right? It's got that sort of, I will eat you energy. And she is pulling it off. She can definitely do that. This is one of my favorite looks. I love the color on her. I love that hairstyle, those sharp lines, that V coming in towards the center of her forehead. It is so cool and so chic. She looks absolutely stunning. You can also pull off a look like this. I believe this is her at the Scaparelli Hot Couture show. And she just showed up and she looked amazing. That long vertical, those that sculptural sort of detailing in her arms, it's very much giving body armor and she does that so incredibly well so she can really lean into the dramatic side of things but she also has a romantic essence which allows her to pull off these sort of looks so there's something softer the draping and you know the very feminine but grown and sexy vibe of these things that she can really do. So she can switch it up a lot, which is really the key component to her being able to turn look after look after look. It's that, and of course, that she is 
a model, essentially. She is a designer's dream, but her essence blend really makes her uniquely poised to be the fashionista that she is. When she combines the dramatic and the romantic, you take it up to another level, right? There's that, the long vertical, but also the shaping and that sort of draping on the dress, the nude dress to the right and that wet hair, the drama of it all, but the sexy drama, she does this so incredibly well. And the last essence that I see Zendaya as having is, but it's very, very small. It's not as prominent as these two. These are so prominent that she can pull off a purely dramatic look and she can also pull off a purely romantic look. An ingenue essence. She has it, but she cannot pull off a purely ingenue look. So it's not one of her dominant essences, but it's there. And here, she was younger too, that's a part of it. So she was younger and she was dressing as a much younger person and that's fine. But these are touches of ingenue. You can see here, there's the lighter color, there's the, the graphic, it's just frilly, the stress to the right. And there's a softness and a delicacy to these, but she, she looks beautiful and she can do it. Are these her best looks ever? No. And between these two, the one to the left where there is more structure to the fabric, in comparison to the one right next to it, that leans a little bit more dramatic, right? Because of that fabric weight and structure so that she looks better in that because that is better in alignment with her bone structure. Compare that now to these completely ingenue styles. This is very girly, very delicate, very small. And these are just very separate from her. She cannot pull off a look that leans too heavy in that essence without anything either romantic, so a mature essence to it, or dramatic to really anchor it. So let's remember that. Here you can see sort of what I mean. This was Zendaya at one of the last Met Galas. She was incredibly on theme. This was the camp, I think that was the theme. She did a fantastic job. She looked great, but this is not one of her best looks. And this is not something we would recommend for her. She is not so ingenue that the stress outside of that theme and that moment would make sense. She looked good and the theatrics of the dress, it was really a great moment, but this is not one of her best looks because it doesn't honor two of her most important essences. And it is a very childish look on her for that reason, if we take it outside of where it was. But here we have her when she just does a touch of ingenue, but everything else is there. So this first look is very much a mix of romantic and ingenue, right? There's that tool and the skirt flares out and that watercolor, soft pastel coloring up top in the bodice. But there's diamonds on her neck and her glam is very sophisticated and romantic and she looks very grown. So these things anchor well and full long vertical. So that's supported. So she looks great. In the middle, we have, again, the soft pink and yellow, that very light kind of fabric that leans very youthful and almost ethereal in essence. But there's that long vertical again that's being respected and there's just something quite sophisticated about it. Her face as well, her makeup is very grown, clean, but very glam. And this last one is a suit. Zendaya looks amazing in a suit, but this of course, leans both romantic and ingenue. There's that sort of even slightly gamenish, um, but she's, she's really doing a great job. It has a level of sophistication to it. It's grown, it's cute, but it's grown. And that is really key for her to successfully pull off anything that leans youthful. And we can see that again here, this dress to the left, the petals are the delicate touch. They are romantic, but the color is soft pink. So there's that youthful element, but again, it's top to bottom. So long vertical. And then you look at her neck and it's very much grown and glamorous as well as her hair. So that's a beautiful blend. And she looked stunning there. 
this middle one is a little bit too delicate for her but again there's a lot of the other things that work that make it okay so yes it's delicate and it's very soft and girly but her face is very much done in a mature and glamorous way and it it ties it works she can do that and i believe this last look she wore to the dinner before the met gala and it leans very romantic right it's very close to her body it's it's but it's also very sleek so it's more like soft dramatic and then there's those touches of those whimsical flowers and that's the touch of girly and ingenue so it's very stunning on her now Equally important is to discuss what essences Zendaya doesn't have. The most glaring one is the gamine. And it's important because I think her look leaned into some of those aspects and that's why it further pulled away from her. But looking at Zendaya's style over the years, you can see here that these are looks that lean very much into the gamine sort of category. They are incredibly busy looks right? They have a lot of that sharp, crisp detailing, a lot of color blocking, that staccato effect where you have different patterns, very bright, very vivid, very youthful, uh, in some cases, very boyish. I've placed them like this on a sort of spectrum. So we can see how as it gets, it moves away from the gamine and slightly more polished, she looks more harmonious and more like herself. So starting right off with the first look on the left this is by far her least flattering look right there's just too much going on it's too relaxed for her it's very interesting right it has all of these pieces but these pieces are placed in such a way that they look unsophisticated on her this requires somebody with very much a almost grungy style who can carry that off in a very dominant gamine essence and Zendaya does not. On her, this looks very disheveled and she looks unrefined. And then to the right of that, there's these two looks that are heavy on the color and pattern, color blocking, the sharp pieces. You see that look to the left with all those different geometric shapes and the shorts are very cropped and so it, it's very fun and very youthful but again it comes off as slightly childish on Zendaya to be fair this is when Zendaya was a lot younger I think these two looks in particular so that's not what I'm judging but just looking at her as a whole and saying even at that time when she was very young she was always better suited by more polished and elevated looks but these two look better than the one to the left because her glam is more elevated. It's more glamorous, right? Her her makeup and her hair, especially in this first look. So it kind of helps to move it along. So th these two suit her better than the other one. And then the look to the right of that, that sudden change in pattern and color is very disruptive on her. It's very abrupt and it obviously disrupts her long vertical line, which is kind of her key component. So not harmonious again. And then we move on to the next two looks where she is again elevating further this is a very interesting look here but it is slightly busy but she did manage to kind of ground it and it works because that black stocking and shoes along with the black skirt and then that patterning on her vest that creates a sort of long vertical line and it's very interesting and it's visually interesting but the colors are also subdued so it's not stark against her so it's in my opinion still a little bit too much going on and but but interesting and it works it looks nice but she's moving towards the more elevated and more elongation and more polished which she requires my biggest issue with that look is her hair here is uh quite it's short, the cut is a little bit geometric, and it's also very flat. So it, it goes against that. Her romantic essence which requires a more polish, some more movement, and some more glamour. But this look with a different hairstyle could have been elevated further. But it's okay. It's, it's the best as far as all the other ones go. The one to the right of it, I don't think is better than the one we just discussed. But again, there's maintenance of that vertical line with the black but there is too much going on so that Louis Vuitton printing on 
the the monogram on her chest and the stripes to her side and the pattern of the shoes there's just too much different detailing that makes it inelegant on her which is a look that could have otherwise been much better and more polished and those shoes are kind of reminiscent of a running shoe but it's it's booties um but that ultra casual styling with this look doesn't work either so just a regular pump would have worked much better and kind of helped to tie it all together more so than the shoes that she chose. And then to the right of that, you see the yellow top and green shorts still has some very geometric elements and slight color blocking, right? That pattern is yellow and white, but it's a lot more subdued than what we've seen in the looks previous to it. And the way that the two colors harmonize together, the top and the bottom is a lot more harmonious. It's not as stark against each other. So it has elements of gamine, but they are very much softened. And in that softening, it works better with Zendaya. So on a spectrum, the less gamine her outfit leans, the more it suits her. This looks the most elevated, the most polished. And I mean, her hair is not the most glamorous, but it works so much better than everything else. I hope you see what I'm saying. The point is, the more gamine, the less harmonious, the more, the less flattering on Zendaya. She needs to remove all that excess detailing and that color blocking when she takes all of that off and moves towards a more elevated feel, then it becomes a lot more flattering on her. I'm exploring now what happens when she leans into that more chaotic side of the gamine essence. So when she has all the extra detailing, she really looks out of place. To me, the more details Zendaya has, as these looks show, the more she gets lost. So in this first look, there's just a lot going on. There's the sharp tailoring, yes, but there's three different patterns and then the necktie and her hair is quite flat. And the way that this fits is not giving her crisp, sharp edges. It's not streamlining her long and very slim body. It widens her silhouette in a way that doesn't flatter her at all. The one to the next of it is more streamlined, but we're lacking the sharpness and the crispness of the tailoring. The edges are, some of them, quite rounded because the fabric is velvet. And the polka dots, the tie at the neck, there's just so much going on. And again, here I wanted to discuss how I feel that headpieces really generally take away from Zendaya. She's someone whose hair I like to see because it, it fits into the overall glamour of her look. Her hair and her makeup are quite important. So when she has headpieces, she has to be very careful. Not that she can't do it at all. I've seen her wear hats and look really cool, but then you have to take the whole look into consideration. Generally speaking though, I prefer her with cleaner and more glamorous makeup and no headpieces and glamorous hair. This is very obvious in these three pictures to the right where I think she was doing a campaign for Dolce & Gabbana, but there's just too much detailing in each of these looks and it doesn't work for her. She almost has to pick something to focus on and that let that be the highlight. But in each of these, what she's wearing is competing with her because it's too animated, it's too detailed and I just want to strip things off and really tone it down so that she comes to the forefront. So now coming back to this dress, one of my biggest issues with it is that in the essence makeup of this look, they leaned quite heavily into this sort of detailing, this excess detailing where there's so much to look at that I almost lose Zendaya within the look. There's specific reasons why I feel the things didn't work, like the fabric, the color, and I'll discuss that in a bit, but ultimately that's it. It was that leaning into an essence that she doesn't have that made this a look that just felt ultimately busy on her. And she doesn't do well with busy. So already we were kind of coming into this on what I would consider a misstep for her particular essence blend. And then all the other little things just added up and added up and created a look that ultimately didn't harmonize well with her. And now looking at this dress and keeping in mind the criteria that I described at the beginning, which is essences, lines, and color. Beginning with lines. 
for me, my biggest issue with this dress is the fabric choice. I think that Zendaya is some sort of dramatic, likely a soft dramatic, but um, again, not the key purpose of this video, but she looks wonderful in draped styles that follow the outline of her body as well as sharply tailored styles. So it would make sense if she were a soft dramatic. Let's say she is. That means that she has to go either way. It, it's either we're going to go fully tailored and go for all the angles and keep it sharp, meaning we're honoring more of the dramatic side, or we're going to go softer and draped and we're going more of the romantic side, which again, the blend creates the soft dramatic. If that's the case, then this fabric sort of sits right in the middle, but it doesn't really do either of them well. So it's structured enough to maintain its own shape. It has enough weight to it, but not structured enough to fully benefit and highlight a dramatic type. At the same time, it does allow for draping so that we can beautifully create a, a silhouette and a beautiful shape for a romantic but it's not soft enough to cling to her body and really enhance that that shape so it doesn't do either of these things particularly well and it's just kind of there i also dislike how it has the sheen to me it sort of lacks a luxurious feel and a polish that Zendaya needs. It feels, for lack of a better word, kind of cheap. It feels just not good enough for her. Added to that, there's all this detailing, these sort of grapes that are at her hip area that fall off her arm, and they obviously make sense in the context of the dress and the theme. But the, they also add to that sort of plasticky feel that really makes this look like a costume. And yes, it's a costume party, I get that. But now speaking on harmony with the person, on the right person, it wouldn't feel like a costume. It would look very harmonious and very natural. This looks like Zendaya is wearing a costume. Let's also now discuss the color. So this green navy combination I just don't like it on her. There's something that kind of hits her skin and I don't know if it's the lighting on what I'm looking at, but it's not the greatest colorway on her. I think it lacks a vibrancy and it's not doing anything to elevate her personal coloring and to really mesh together. So there's a separation between her and the dress, again, that lack of harmony. So these things all come together where it looks like there's too much going on. Zendaya has this desire for clean and elevated and polished sort of styling because of how her essence is blend together. And in this dress, there's just so many tiny little pieces everywhere, so many elements and so much detailing that it becomes too much visually for her. It's a bit overwhelming of a look. And I have this desire to take things off, or like simplify things. If we look at her makeup, which again, technique wise is absolutely spectacular. I'm in awe of how they're able to create this eye look and really feel like she has no eyebrows and that deep shadow around her eyes and that beautiful color. It's stunning, but it looks theatrical on her. It looks like she is going to a costume party, which I know she is, but that's a lack of harmony. So it's difficult for me to talk about these looks and be aware of the fact that she was going for something over the top. But when we look at our personal style, what we're trying to do is create something that harmonizes with us and brings forth your truest, best self. That's authentic styling. And this is obviously not what she's trying to do at this particular event. I understand that. But I think even in this case, um, when you look at it and you can appreciate that the vision's there, the execution's there, but it doesn't work with this person, why is that? It's useful to be able to sort of pick it apart and say, this is why. Just looking at her face, I have this desire to remove things. I want to take off that hat. I want to take off the netting and there's just too much detail, too much going on. I want to clean her eye area 
and it looks it looks cool. It's a cool effect, but there's no harmony on her. It's too ornate. And it's not a question of intensity, right? But remember at the beginning when we looked at her dramatic styling and she had that very vampy dark coloring, she looked stunning. She can definitely handle intense color. But in this combination, it's the intensity mixed with the ornateness. And she has one half of that essence blend. Intensity, definitely, but the ornate styling around her eye it's too much for her. She doesn't do well with that. And instead of tying it all together, her makeup becomes a thing that really throws it over the top. If the dress worked, this makeup would look great because it would accentuate the dress. But because the dress itself doesn't work, this makeup just takes it too far. And and it's difficult to really critique what you did with the makeup, which is great, versus what it does on the person you did it to and it doesn't vibe with her. So all together, this look is way too busy for her. There's so much to focus on, too much to focus on, and all of it just doesn't work out. I wish she didn't have the feather, I wish she didn't have the netting. I wish there wasn't that drape. I wish she would use a different fabric. I can't wish so many different things to happen for the look to work without realizing the look doesn't work. That said, the look did have some merits. It was interesting, was beautiful to look at, was something to talk about, but just didn't harmonize with her as well as I would have wanted it to. I think if I saw this again, just standing on a mannequin or had it on somebody else entirely different, it would have been a different look. It would have elevated to another level, but on her, it, it, for me, Again, this is all subjective, but for me, I would have wanted to see something execute slightly different. Now, let's talk briefly about this second look. I think here she was referencing, obviously, a little bit more of that lighter area, uh, Garden of Time. I love that headpiece. I think she looks absolutely stunning in it. And I love how clean her face looks, right? It's the first thing I see when I'm comparing it to this here she has that freshness again and it brings back her sophistication she has a very mature essence and when that maturity and that sophistication is missing she does not look good so this immediately looks much better than the look before it for that reason the dress itself is okay it's a black dress it was from the spring summer 1996 Givenchy by Galliano. So again, a reference that makes sense with the reawakening fashion theme. She's going back in time and getting something from the archives. And that is very cool. And the headpiece was by Philip Treacy for Alexander McQueen, spring, summer 2007. So again, she's making these references, but the dress itself, I do enjoy the top of this dress. I just wish that she had done something different with the bottom of it because that silhouette does not work on her. If you look to the right, it makes her bottom half look shorter than it is. It really messes with her proportions because it flares out again, not doing what I want dresses to do for Cindy. Now there's people who absolutely loved these looks and I understand that. I think we all look for different things, but on the basis of harmony and how they harmonized with her, they just didn't for me. And I was really quite disappointed. Now, what would I have liked to see for Zendaya? A couple of things. So I, I think because of her dramatic essence and her ability to really carry structure so well, I would have used these two images as references, right? So that armored structure, and we think of the garden of time, maybe she could have referenced the gate at the garden, something like that, but with these very delicate flowers to kind of tie into that touch of ingenue and also the theme as well, that could have been a very cool way to do both things and anchor her look. And we know that she does that armor and anchoring very, very well. I mean, she broke the internet with this Mugler robot dress. It's incredible. And a few years back, she did Joan of Arc and she wore that suit of armor dress and that was incredible too. So she can really, really do that. She could have gone that route and I think she would have 
nailed it if she thought a little bit about how to execute from that point of view. And these are some more sample references. Again, that bodice, that armor, she does that so incredibly well. And this dress, this pink and silver dress, kind of feels like she found a way to merge those two. So there was a lot of reference, even from her own previous styling that I think she could have thought a little bit more into and then gone in that route, her and her stylist. This is a completely different direction that she could have gone in, referencing this look by Cardi B. I I thought this was a great look for her when she wore it, but I also always wondered what it would look like on somebody with a longer vertical line, right, where her legs could have been stretched out more and Zendaya has that sort of body. So on someone like her, I also think something like this would have been beautiful, something sculptural. And instead of the clam and the pearl, Zendaya could reference a rose. So something that builds her into the rose and she could have been coming out of it somehow. This dress is also a reference because it has that petaling. I don't know if you're kind of seeing where I'm going with this sort of thinking, but I I really think if she wanted to do something slightly more delicate, but that still supported all her essences, that could have been a way to go. And then here, of course, she could have done the headpiece like she had. I would love to know what you thought. Were you one of the people who absolutely loved Zendaya's looks? Or do you agree with me that there was something there that just didn't quite fit? Thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you like the content that I'm creating or if you want to discuss anything I touched on in the video, please do so. Leave me a comment. Also, like the video and of course, subscribe and turn on those notifications. I'll see you on the next one.